Hey guys, it's Chris from Steeda and welcome to the next installment of getting this silver bullet Edelbrock supercharged. In the last video, we got the supercharger all ready to go to be dropped on the engine. And in this one, it'll be kind of a top level view of getting that Gen 3 Coyote Edelbrock supercharged and ultimately in the car. Follow along because I'm gonna be learning a lot and chatting with Jamie. So without further ado, let's get to it. So, we prepped the supercharger a little bit more. We obviously have a new addition here waiting for the supercharger to be installed uh, right out of the silver bullet. So, Jamie, what did you do to the supercharger since we last touched it yesterday? Uh, we installed all of our fittings and lines for our fuel system so that uh, we can flow the amount of fuel we need for the E85 that we're going to be running in this. Uh, the fuel cyst, fuel lines and fittings that came with the kit are, are you know, they're plenty for the for 93 octane street use. They're fine, but we are going to be using this thing on the drag strip pretty hard, and we're going to be running E85. So we needed to step up the size of our fuel lines. Also, uh, our adjustable fuel pressure regulator, we needed to install it as well. So fabbed up a quick mount for that so we could attach it and our fuel pressure gauge so we can uh, keep track of how much fuel pressure we've got. Um, and that's all we have done other than the stock assembly on this. I mean, even with uh, our custom modifications to this, the key is to, to get this blower ready. Uh, prepped for the power levels that we're going to be putting out. There's no use in ripping it back out, ripping lines out, all that sort of stuff. We're just going to set it up for max effort from the get-go. But honestly, there really wasn't much that we No, it was, just, it, was just changed, it was just changing fittings to accommodate what the fuel lines we're going to use. And the fuel rails already had were already threaded, they were already set up for doing it, so it was just a matter of getting the correct uh, fittings and putting it all together, making a couple lines up so we could uh, adapt it to it, and it's ready to go. Didn't even need to pop the cover off either. No, we haven't, we haven't had any of the, haven't had the top cover off of the supercharger unit or anything. It's, uh, like I said, it's, it's ready to go on the vehicle. So, with that said, we have our short block here, so tell us a little bit about um, what you've done to prep, and before we get into that, I will mention this is a bone stock short block. And now what did we do it, to this short block to prep it a little bit? It is a bone stock short block, but we did pull the pistons and measured the ring gap and regapped the piston rings for the amount of boost that we intend on running. This was going to be a normal Edelbrock uh, Stage 2 kit. Uh, we wouldn't need to have done that. The boost level won't be that high, but we're going for a max effort, so we needed to make sure that the piston rings were going to uh, stay intact while we were doing this. The, as you raise the boost level, your temperature in the combustion chamber goes up and the ring gap will close if it's not sufficient. So we, we regap the rings and that's it. Everything else in it is completely as delivered from forward. And to add real quick, like Jamie said, if you're using the out-of-the-box stage 2 kit, you do not need to worry about ring gaps or anything like that. Even if you jump away from Metal Box 2, you're still probably not going to have an issue. But we are planning for max effort, and for that something that simple to be a point of failure, uh, we're going to plan ahead. And if it's as simple as we're filing down those rings just a little bit more so we get a little bit more leeway and the additional heat, that this thing's going to generate within those uh, combustion chambers, it's going to help. Well, that and since we started with a new short block that we had to finish assembling up the rest of the components to, it was easy to pull the pistons out and check everything before we really got started. Uh, the next thing is the cylinder heads on this are, uh, they're Gen 3, but they're ported. Uh, thanks, uh, Breaded Airflow Solutions for the ported heads. And then uh, the cams, we also have comp cams, their blower cam set up, um, obviously to complement the blower that'll be going on the car, um, which is both uh, intake and exhaust. 
Yes. But outside of that, I mean, what have you done um, to this to prep for this supercharger right, the supercharger installation? The prep for the install, I went ahead and installed the balancer. Uh, it's a little bit noisy for a video to install that for the microphones. Uh, went ahead and took the pulley loose on the alternator and all of the hardware that has to be removed for this install is all loose. Also, as part of the instructions, this uh, timing cover boss needed to be drilled in half for the installation of a bolt for the plate bracket that comes up and holds everything together. The one that, that guy. So I went ahead and tap that so that uh, it would just speed up the pace of the, the video because nobody wants to sit here and watch that. <laughs> um, in addition, we, we already obviously did the port side um, on the blower itself, but we do have the direct injection in the valley here. Um, that doesn't need to be touched. No, it's all stock, it's all original. Uh, we just put it all back like it was originally from Ford. Uh, plenty of fuel flow for this kind of power level. Uh, you shouldn't need to touch it. Just make sure everything is resealed. If you do remove them, install new O-rings and new seals because it can cause a compression leak. Ooh. But, uh... Okay, so what do we need to do to get this supercharger on top of this coyote? Um, cause it to levitate? No, we, got, we, need to, we need to pick it up and set it on top. It's going to take uh, the instruction book says to have an assistant. We will probably have a third person helping to uh, get it set up on top of here because this is a little bit higher than what your car would be because this engine's on a table and is assembled on our drag K member that's going back in the car. So it's just gonna take uh, three of us to get it set up there safely so nobody loses any fingers. Also, let's go ahead and grab the bag of bolts to go to the supercharger assembly. That's what we need in a minute. Uh, one other thing in the instruction on this, it says on page 21, line 65, to remove the passenger side heater tube before you install the blower. It just gives you more room to be able to get to the front bolt to be able to properly torque it. I've already got the bolt loose on this, so we can just take that out, and we will install it back in there once we have the blower in place. So from here, we should be ready to set the blower on top of the engine. Peyton, would you like to come around and <laughs> assist? Sure. Alright, so we're going to pick it up. Uh, you can pick it up from the fuel rail. It's bolted down nice and solid. Pick it up by the lid because I'm going to grab it by the back when I go to set it down. Ready? Ready when you are. Ready? Yep. Shift over to the fuel rail. Set it this way just a hair, and it's sitting not touching anything, okay? Sitting on top of the direct injection bolts. That's fine. One of those little adjustments that has to be made, the injectors are clocked just a little bit off and it's allowing them to catch the edge of the valve cover. 
so we need to loosen up the fuel rail to be able to reclock them. Sometimes this stuff happens when you're deviating away from an out-of-the-box kit. Well, the, the instructions say to remove the fuel rails completely before you install this. And because of our fuel rails, uh, we're choosing not to do it that way. Those injectors need to be pointing forward. You want to switch sides? Yeah. Now, let's pick it up. It's just sitting on top of the head. That's fine. And again, on this side, we're just going to reposition the injectors so that they will clear all of the valve cover rail. I gotta say, the black looks good sitting on top of this. sitting nice and flush. At this point we can go ahead and install the mounting bolt. It does take a little bit of wiggling to get it lined up. Do not run the bolts down tight before you don't try to start them with a with a ratchet. Make sure you start them by hand first so you don't cross thread them. They're small bolts, they're easy to cross thread. You will absolutely ruin your cylinder heads if you do that. Keep wiggling until it gets straight. Use the extension to uh, Now I understand why they wanted you to remove the water tube because getting to that front bolt is an absolute chore. 
It's definitely a tight fit. The instructions say to use universal joint sockets and you will find them to be almost necessary to be able to get some of these bolts in place and tight. Is that one in the middle too? There's five on each side. So tell me a little bit more. I know that um, you know boost is a result of you know how much back pressure you're going to have through the system. We have freer flowing heads. We have less restrictions in the exhaust. So that doesn't necessarily mean if we see lower boost, we're going to see less power. Actually, it's going to be more efficient, right? Yes. When you the. Boost is a product of how much restriction the engine actually has. And as efficient as cylinder heads and the exhaust system is on this engine, we're probably not going to see the same boost levels that you would see even in a street application. But the power output will be the same or more just because of how efficient the rest of the system is. All right, I need to go get a magnet so I can get these bolts. Okay. Some of these bolts can be difficult to reach and using a magnet can help get the bolts started without dropping them in every conceivable hole in this engine. Especially down the spark plug well. That would not be good. It just makes it a little bit easier to get them started. I'll hand this to Chris so he can get the inside bolts on that side. Long one. They're all, the same. They're all the same same length bolts. I only see one in the center here. There's only one in the center and then the other two are off. Got it. They're evenly spaced down the motor. There it is. Yes, magnets definitely helpful. So going back to the boost conversation, more boost always is or isn't as yeah. More boost isn't necessarily always as good. Um, it all depends on what you're doing, what your application is, as to what your, what your actual boost level will be. And as anybody that's ever dealt with supercharged or turbocharged engines also know that as you increase the amount of boost, you're also increasing the amount of heat on the air charge, which in itself is not a good thing. Right and it makes the intercooler system have to work even harder. And as the air charge temperature goes up, the amount of power the engine produces goes down. That the computer starts seeing what your temperatures are and it starts pulling timing. Right. Which ultimately reduces how much power the engine makes. Okay. You good? Hence the reason that uh, 
Edelbrock went to the double pass three core intercooler system to help alleviate some of the uh, temperature problems seen on the uh, intake air once it's been compressed. The heat exchanger and the coolant line plumbing will do once the engine is back in the car, but it has a large uh, water to air heat exchanger that goes in front of the radiator. and has a coolant pump to keep the water moving. These are a chore, like you said. This is the boring part of the video where you get to watch two guys struggling with bolts that they can't see. But while Chris is tightening up the other side of the supercharger bolt, we will get started on removing all of the hardware that is necessary for installing. Six millimeter Allen wrench. And that is not a hole. That's the right one. millimeter. Now that we've got all the correct bolts installed in the bracket, we can tighten it down. Once all the bolts are installed and snugged down, you can go ahead and tighten them. These two pulleys. Magnets are awesome. And tighten them down.
It's done, boss. Yeah. The long bolt and spacer go in that hole. The, as they describe them, the medium spacers, which is in between large and small. The short guy goes in the, in the hole that you previously drilled and tapped. Once you get all these in place and snugged down. And this is the belt that was included with? This is the included belt with the kit. Uh, To make installing the belt a little bit easier, you might want to put it over the uh, tensioner to start. Over the tensioner pulley to start with, because there's not a lot of room behind it. And again, the pulley has an alignment peg on it to or the pincher has an alignment peg on it to hold it in place so that you can <coughs> properly <coughs> properly torque it. It's the most important pulley right here. All right, at this point, we're ready to finish installing the belt and set the tension on. Uh, Chris, if you'll go ahead and pull the tensioner over. First, you gotta line it up. Okay, eventually we'll get here. Okay, now Chris can release the tension. And the belt is installed. You can see what the, the, see the new uh, belt routing, how it's changed from original. Make sure that the pulley, the belts line up in all the pulleys, that all the grooves, so that Nothing slips, nothing moves, doesn't damage the belt when you first crank it up. That's it. Uh, not ready to start this thing up, right? Uh, not quite. <laughs> We're not quite ready to start it up, but uh, at, at this point, uh, it's ready, with the exception of it doesn't have the transmission attached yet, to go back in the car. Uh, the wiring harness has not been installed yet. Um, there are a couple of notes in the uh, installation manual about the wiring harness of uh, the intake manifold runner controllers that will be unplugged mm -hmm. and they need to be taped off so that uh, they don't get damaged, the wires don't get damaged in case you ever trade your vehicle, pull it off for whatever reason, you can reattach your uh, connectors to the original manifold. And everything we did is reversible for the most part, right? Yeah, we, we haven't changed anything that is not reversible. If you ever decided you were getting rid of your car and wanted to take it off, uh, everything can be reinstalled as it came apart. It really is a, a bolt-in kit, you know. Um, but it's exciting. I'm uh, excited to see what this thing does with the silver bullet. Ultimately, we'll be 
dropping the body of the car onto the engine, right? Yeah, we're going to set the car over the top of the engine and transmission. It'll be completely assembled at that point. And once it's back in the car, then we'll finish up the installation video with uh, installation and plumbing of the intercooler system. So next up, we're going to lower the car on top of this engine, get the intercooler plumbed, intercooler system plumbed, as well as uh, all the wiring. But after that, should be ready to start this thing up. As you can see, the Edelbrock supercharger installation is complete on the Silver Bullet. We only had so much time, it was crunch time, getting ready for a test and tune session, the last test and tune, getting ready for Mod Nationals, which ultimately we're going to debut this car. So with that said, Jamie, if you don't mind going over what you did to get this thing ready for the testing session and ultimately Mod Nationals. Well, as we said before in the earlier videos, that there were modifications that we were going to make because of our combination. The fuel rails, fuel injectors, fuel system is not stock on this car, so we had to make some changes for that that caused us to make other changes. But uh, as you can see, we've got an external regulator on the top of the engine to control the fuel pressure. And with our, modify, our modifications to the fuel rails, we had to change our heater hose routing and a couple of other things just to be able to get everything in and tidy. Uh, We've changed a couple of things with the intercooler setup. We have a five gallon water tank in the back uh, so that we can ice it between runs. Uh, heat exchangers up front. Right? The front mount heat exchangers installed. The, uh, the pump that came with the Edelbrock kit is being used. The only thing we did was spliced into the uh, intercooler lines to be able to plumb our ice tank from the back into the intercooler directly. Then it returns through the heat exchanger back to the tank. Um, otherwise, the kit is as delivered from Edelbrock. Uh, we still have, we used their air box, throttle body. Their uh, blower assembly is completely stocked. The only modifications we made were to the fuel rails themselves to accommodate our fuel system. Now, we chose not to use the injectors or the spark plugs that came with their kit because our prep level is above what those are capable of dealing with. This is a custom tuned setup uh, and we wanted to make sure that everything was going to be safe with the tune. So we used the uh, larger injectors that we had been running in our previous setup. Now, if you don't mind uh, going back and kind of covering some of the back and forth we have with Lund, getting this thing dialed in, as well as the cams that we are running on this build and the Circle D converter that we were waiting to get everything put together and in the car. Well, let's start with the Circle D converter. We've been working with Circle D for a long time, uh, research and development for them on the naturally aspirated drag setups. And we reached out to them to, for a uh, supercharged torque converter. And I must say it works rather well. <laughs> they have been extremely good to work with. The tuning on this car took a couple of days. We had several issues we had to work through. Um, most were fuel related at getting enough fuel volume to both sides of the injection system. This car still has a direct inject uh, system on it and the indirect inject. And we were just having some issues with uh, getting our fuel volume where it needed to be to keep the car, keep the engine safe during uh, the high boost loads that it is going to see. And speaking of boost, hmm. uh, 
we retained the uh, Edelbrock stock lower crank pulley and we decided to go straight uh, straight to their small two and a half inch blower pulley. Two, two and three quarter. Two and three quarter inch, yeah. excuse me, two and three quarter inch blower pulley. And we found that we had a little <laughs> bit too much boost for what a stock bottom end can stand. There is such a thing as, <laughs> as too much boost. <laughs> yeah, we were somewhere north of 22 pounds of boost. That was a little bit much. So we had to tone that down. So right now we're running at about 16 and a half pounds of boost. With uh, what, roughly 3.1 inch? It's 3.1 inch uh, uh, custom pulley that we had to fab up Friday in order to uh, be able to get to the test in tune and have, an, have the boost in a place where we were making the power we thought that we should. And like I said, we spent the better part of two days on the dyno uh, getting this combination tuned to where the power was good and the tune on the car is safe for the engine. We're not too worried about uh, blowing everything out of the oil pan. <laughs> that would not be good. No. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, I mean, the camshafts? Uh, uh, we're running uh, the same comp cams that we were running before the stage three uh, naturally aspirated cams. We ran into an issue running the uh, the blower cams from comp. The lift was too high for our variable cam timing to work properly. So we had to take those out and put the uh, put our NA stage three cams back in it. And uh, in addition to that, um, we also have the Brett Barber ported heads that we took off the NA car as well. Yeah, I mean, the, the top end of the, the cylinder heads, the cams, the valve springs, the whole top end of it is exactly the same as we've been running for the past year and a half. So to say that if you were to jump to a 2.75 pulley on your stock car, probably won't see 22 pounds of boost like this would, uh, potentially even more you, potentially, you could potentially have more boost <laughs> than this application produces because of the flow of the cylinder heads it's reducing some restriction and that's probably dropped our boost down about four pounds from what you would normally see for sure so I'm really excited about this thing uh, installations complete we kind of jumped ahead in the progress of this build. Um, it's already got C85, it's got the ice tank, everything else. But don't worry, we're gonna run this thing at Mon Nats, see what we can put down on this setup or darn close to it by the time we get there. And ultimately, we're gonna backtrack and show you what it runs on 93 with the 3.5 pulley. And then after that, we're gonna put the smaller pulley on and slowly work through the progress. So ultimately, you can see the stages that this, this build would go through and slowly adding more and more and more and more power to the Silver Bullet. Jamie, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, basically what the video series should do is show you what you would need to do to get to the power level you're looking to be at. Awesome, well, that about wraps things up. If you like the content of this video, go ahead and comment below. Let us know what you think about this. If you wanna see anything else, in terms of the installation and the progress. Uh, we have a whole plan for this car, but again, we're agile. We want to know exactly what you think. Hit that like and subscribe button, the notification bell, so you get a notification on your phone next time a Steeda video drops. And don't forget the most important thing, speed matters.